Hey, how's it going? Um, I want to do a, a review on this little axe I have here. It's a pretty cool thing. I've had this maybe close to a decade. Um, and it served me pretty well. I actually got it originally. Um, I wanted like a little camp axe, something that I could put on, um, you know, kind of stick in my backpack, uh, throw on my belt, and, and it won't weigh me down too much. Um, it's worked pretty good. I, I, as far as your normal kind of hatchet, maybe can't do what a, a full-size hatchet can do, just because it kind of like lacks the heft. But um, if you kind of want something that will fill the role of a hatchet, um, take the place of a knife, you know, I mean, at least for certain applications, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good choice. I like how you kind of get on, uh, get your hand up here next to the head. You can kind of shave things, good for feathering wood. Uh, do a little bit of whittling when you're sitting by the fire if you're camping. Um, the handle, the shape of it is just a little bit different than, than um, some of the other hatchets I was looking at, you know, of the Scandinavian design, which this is. And I kind of like it, though. Um, has its own character to it, fits in the hand really well, feels really good. Um, it's almost like kind of a tomahawk kind of vibe. Um, but anyway, yeah, I've had this for many years. I think when I first got it, maybe it was $120, something like that you know, several years ago. I was looking up, kind of see uh, what the, if they still offer it, what the price is. And I see these going for somewhere around 150 these days, uh, which is kind of interesting because that's more than the, uh, the full size hatchets that they have, or, you know, they have, they have one with a bigger head and kind of a short handle. And then they have kind of your, what you typically think of a, a hatchet. Um, and for some reason, these are more. And I think it maybe it has something to do with the, the machinery they have. Is it hard to make these heads smaller or something? I, I don't know. But uh, doing a little bit of reading about these, I found, uh, found out some information. Um, one of the things that's cool is the maker. Anybody who is in the factory and actually making your axes, if they made this head, they're going to put their initials on there. Um, and uh, I have some information on it. I'll read it to you uh, a different part of the video. Um, but uh, this is Leonard Peterson, I think, is the craftsman that made this, who I also read is the same craftsman that designed the mini hatchet, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the, uh, as far as Grants Forest Brooks themselves, this is the only product I have by them. I have some other uh, Scandinavian style uh, axes and hatchets, but um, not of Grants Forest Brooks. And part of the reason for that is they cost a lot. And the reason they cost a lot is this is probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, uh, axe maker of this style that you know that is in Sweden. Um, but there are some other ones that are out there. I know Wetterlings makes ones very sim makes them very similar. Um, they cost a little bit less. And then if you if you kind of want to get into the uh, kind of get into some Scan Scandinavian axes or hatchets, get your feet wet, but you don't want to pay the price, you can also try a um, Husqvarna, which is a pretty good option. They, from what I've read, uh, they use other axe making companies in Sweden to make their their axes for them. So. I've heard they kind of jump around a little bit. I know Wetterlings did for a while. Um, currently, I'm not sure who's making their axes. But if you look at one of these and you look at one of those husk varnish, you're going to see a lot of similarities. Maybe it's not quite, you know, up to par to these, but it's so close that if, if you don't have a lot of money to throw around, but you really like the design of these axes, which most people do, I do, um, I think that it would be a pretty good choice. Uh, if you want to spring for a little bit, you know something a little bit better you could pay the extra money um i didn't get the full size axe because i just kind of wanted to uh you know get this little mini hatch i thought was so cool i didn't see something else like it on the market at least not of this quality pretty sure it's a hickory handle um the i know that sweden they're known for their steel this is really really good quality steel they harden the edge um and they keep the rest of it uh, soft, which I guess is pretty standard for axes and hatchets. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. 
keep the, the edge sharp, but you don't want this thing to shatter and shoot pieces in your face. Uh, better off bending than breaking or chipping. Um, another uh, feature I think is interesting, and I've seen in, in some larger Scandinavian axes, I don't know if, you, if uh, the camera guy can zoom in on here, but it has a wood wedge in there. It looks like a different type of wood, probably a hardwood and nothing else. I've seen a lot of times, you know, sometimes in Scandinavian axes, they'll use this, this same wedge, but they'll also add an additional, uh, usually it's a ring, like a steel ring, goes in there, kind of flares it out more and really locks his head on. I, I guess they didn't do it with this one because it wasn't necessary because the, the head's so light, maybe. Um, short handle, not as much centrifugal force, maybe just the force when it strikes is less, but I've had no issues with this thing. Hasn't budged, hasn't budged in, you know, like I said, probably close to a decade. Um, so I'm definitely a fan. I'm sold on this thing. Um, I looked up some stats. I don't have them with me currently, but I'll make sure to uh, read them off to you or list them uh, in the video so you have kind of an idea of what you're getting into if, if you're gonna buy one of these. Um, all right, well, I hope that you, oh, one other thing. I almost forgot. The sheath. I actually really like the sheath. Except there's no way to hook it on your belt. Um, it, there's rivets are good, you know, really well placed. Um, it doesn't want to cut through. Have an extra piece of leather in there. It hasn't really bit into it like at all, really, it looks like. Um, mainly it's just a little wear up here by kind of where it leads into these snaps. But um, the, the way that I found, and maybe this is traditional, I don't know, maybe this is the way you're supposed to do it. But the way this locks in, goes around the back, well, I found that you can kind of use that to wrap it around your belt, and then you can snap it into place. And it, it's actually pretty secure. Um, the only problem is then you want to use your axe and you have to take it off your belt, and then you have this thing, you know? Um, but maybe that maybe I'm being picky. I, I don't know if that matters all that much. But aside from that one little kind of one aspect of it that I don't like, gr it, this is great. It's better, uh, at least in my opinion, than um, I know the Husqvarna's I have. Those are cool. They look old school. They have like a little belt buckle, but they're bulky and they don't fit well and they're harder to get off. I mean, I look, it's off. All right, um, I want to come out here and show you a little bit of what this hatchet can do. And for a comparison, I brought a full size hatchet. So um, this is the, here, let me take this off. So this is the Grands Forest Brooks mini hatchet. <clears throat> and just so you kind of have an idea of why they call it the mini hatchet, this is a, uh, a somewhat comparable brand. This is also a, <clears throat> a Scandinavian uh, design. This is the Husqvarna hatchet. And if you put them next to each other, you can see there's definitely a, um, a size difference. I don't know if you can see that with the camera or not, but uh, it's quite a bit smaller. And the, the handle's a little bit of a different shape. Um, but pretty much a, a, a very similar kind of feel to it. Uh, as far as the, uh, like the cross section, this one right here is definitely thinner, um, which is good uh, uh, for, for uh, what this kind of is gonna be doing. Uh, it's really good for biting into um, into wood, you know, green wood, you can split like, uh, let's say you're cutting, uh, you want to strip the branches off of, off of a conifer, like a young conifer. This would probably work really well for that. Uh, chopping down a really small sapling. Um, now, if you want to do any splitting, if you want to make kindling with this, if you already have something that's kind of on the smaller side, works really good. It doesn't have the heft and the power of a full size hatchet, but it definitely can, you know, it can do what a hatchet does. Uh, one good thing about it is, let me put this one down. 
Let's see if I can uh, get it to work the way I want it to. I was kind of jumbled up pile of wood here just so I can get some good height on it. We'll see if it holds up or if I have to take this off. Um, usually, if I was doing any kind of splitting, I want to make some kindling. You do this technique where you come down together and then you pop it like that. You get a nice, uh, uh, nice split. And then if I want to, you know, break this down even further, oh, it's kind of off there. Hang on a sec. If you have bad aim, it can even come down like that. And then you can pop it and uh, split that to e into even smaller pieces. It works pretty good for that. So you're by the campfire or by where you're, you know where you're going to make fire. You can process process down a. Um, a piece of wood, not even that big. Make a bunch of these little pieces right here. Start up a fire, real easy. So this is kind of a, a nice, a nice little camp axe. Now another thing that it can do um, is it can shave this wood wood down. It has this little beard here. I always like bearded axes or. I wouldn't say this is exactly a bearded axe, but it has a very dramatic one, you know, beard here. You get your hand right up in there. And you can really shave this, this wood. Um, you know, it being a Scandinavian axe, the bit itself, like the blade, um, is usually more aimed towards... Uh, softwoods i mean in scandinavia they have uh, conifers up there um, mostly and uh, so usually they're going to be designing their axes around that and conifers are known to have fairly soft wood very very straight grain um, so it, you know the, the axe is designed to deal with that kind of thing um, and uh, i mean there's still some power behind it it feels pretty good in your hand I mean, look at that. So, um, you know, and the edge holds up pretty good. You know, over the years, I've had a few nicks in here. I've had to resharpen it a little bit, but it's it's really held up really nice. So, um, it's a pretty good little little chopper. Take out the camera, man. Look at that. And I remember when I got this thing, you know, it was a while ago, several years ago now. It was pretty sharp when I got it. I was very impressed. Uh, I mean, anything you hear about Swedish axes, Swedish steel, Swedish uh, knives, I mean, it's, it's all true. It's pretty good. They know what they're doing. Um, especially these guys. Um, I need to zoom in on there. Grants Forest Brooks, Sweden. And on the other side... Uh, they have a little insignia here, and then the initials of the man who made it, which I definitely appreciate. Yeah, hickory handle, American hickory. I mean, pretty much the best high impact uh, wood that you can get for uh, handles of axes and hammers, and you know, you name it. If it's gonna be getting a lot of shock it's a perfect choice and uh, good quality steel I mean, no complaints if you're in the market you can uh, spend the money I definitely recommend it and again I'm gonna um, let me grab that other hatchet here just so you can get an idea 
of the size difference there. See that guy, you see that guy. All right, hope that helped you. I will, uh, I'll see you next time.